Hey everybody, um, welcome to Landscapes with Mrs. Ramick and Mrs. Germano. Um, today in our lesson we're going to just basically show you how to um, make a fun kind of abstracted landscape either with marker, that's what we're going to demo today, um, or this one was done with crayon, you could use crayons, you could really use anything you want. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about landscapes. So um, I'm going to tell you in a second what you need. And um, oh, and this is my original reference photo. So welcome and let's get started. Okay, to get started, what we need to do this landscape project um, is just plain paper. Copy paper will work, believe it or not, really well because at the end of our landscape project, I'm going to show you how to do this really neat kind of cool trick where we put a little oil on the back of our design and it, it makes it look almost like a stained glass and you can hang it up in your window. You're going to need a pencil and then you have some options. You can do the color part of our landscape with crayons. You could use colored pencils. If you happen to have at home oil pastels, you could add oil pastels and do blending or chalk pastels for that matter. Um, I'm going to use markers. I am in love with Sharpie markers, have been for a really long time, and I have a collection of them at home. Any kind of marker would actually work though. You could use Crayola markers. Um, you could use Bic markers. Um, I'm going to use a combination of Bic ultra fine markers and some Sharpie ultra fine markers and some highlighters and some other markers I've been collecting over the years. So you want to gather those materials and if you do use markers or oil pastels, um, not with chalk, but at that very end, if you borrow a little um, vegetable oil or baby oil from mom and dad or grandma, whoever you're home with, um, and a paper towel, I'll show you a neat trick in the end that I saw on the internet um, to make it look like a stained glass piece of artwork. And it looks really cool when you hang it up in the window. So the last thing you're going to need is a reference picture. I chose um, this photograph that I took when I was on vacation in Garden City, South Carolina. It's my favorite picture. It was my view outside my bedroom window. I woke up to the sunrise every morning. You can really pick any picture you want, or if you're really daring, you could use your imagination. But um, I like personally to have a reference point. So when we're talking about landscapes, I want you to think about, um, I hope there's not a reflection, I think there is a little bit. Think about how you break up your landscape. Landscapes are backgrounds, middle grounds, and foregrounds. Things that are in the foreground are going to look largest because they're closest to you. Things in the middle ground are going to look a little bit smaller, and then things in the background um, are usually going to be very small. They're at a distance, and often the colors are more muted, they're softer, they're not sharp like they might be in the foreground. The other thing um, about a good landscape composition is the rule of thirds. You never want to draw um, or create a composition where like your sun or your horizon line, this is your horizon line that separates the sky from the ground, and in our case the sky from the water, you never want that to go right through the middle of your picture. You always want things to be kind of slightly off-centered, um, so it's a more interesting composition. So I'm going to set my picture over here in front of me so I can look at it, and I'm going to begin to draw. So the first step is we're going to kind of draw out and plan out our landscape. And your landscape doesn't have to be a um, sunset or a sunrise or the ocean. It can be really anything you want. First thing I'm going to do, and remember, you can pause this video, whoops, you can pause this video anytime you want um, to get caught up. So I'm going to start with my pencil and my paper, and I'm just going to draw my horizon line. Here's the middle of my paper. I'm going to go for my horizon line. I'm going to go quite a bit above my, um, 
middle. And that's going to be where the, the horizon line that separates the sky from the water. And my little sun rising up above the um, water. I hope you can see that. I'm going to put right there. And then the beach line that's coming out is kind of at a slant. I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to just do some outlines of my waves crashing. There's a line that kind of comes over here. So I'm just, my landscape is super duper simple. You might want to pause. I'm just really quickly sketching out my outline. I hope you can see that on this video. You might want to pause now to sketch out yours if you have a lot of details. Um, in my photo reference, there's some footprints on the beach, but I'm not going to put that in there. So this might be a time where you pause and then come back. Um, and we'll go to the next step. Okay, so once you have your landscape drawn out, um, you want to get a black marker. I'm going to use a Sharpie. Now, it's a good idea if you're using Sharpie to have a piece of newsprint underneath um, your drawing because Sharpie will bleed through copier paper especially. And we don't want to get any Sharpie on your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa's table, right? Or your babysitter, wherever you're at. Well, most of you probably don't have babysitters. Most of you are old enough to be babysitters. So, but you get, you get what I mean. So I'm actually doing, I'm going to go in and I'm going to outline all of the major components of my landscape. Because I'm doing, this is going to be like a kind of an abstract landscape. Um, and I'm going to put in my waves crashing. I'm going to switch over and maybe I want some variation in my line. So I'm going to use an ultra fine marker. You could use the same marker for the whole thing. I'm going to do a fine line here. I'm going to do another fine line here. Kind of wishing I had done a fine line for my horizon line, but that's okay. Do that. You know what other thing you're going to need that I totally forgot um, to mention is an eraser because we're going to go back in and erase these lines. And if you have a large eraser, that'll work better. If not, we'll just use the top of our pencils. Um, so I've got some different line widths here. I'm going to darken this one up. Um, I think when you have line variation, it just makes your composition more interesting. So look how ridiculously simple my drawing is, but it's going to like kind of cool, look cool and really all pull together when I start adding some color. And this is a really fast project if you use markers. If you don't use markers um, and you use crayon um, or pastels, it would take you a lot longer to do this because you're going to be doing a completely different blending technique that I can talk to you about too. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to erase all my pencil lines. Pretty easy. And brush that off. Now I'm going to work from the top down. And in my picture, there's lots of blues and oranges and purples and yellows in my sunrise. So I'm going to start with my lightest color first, which would be kind of a yellowish color. I'm actually going to use, um, that's a little too green. I'm going to just use a yellow Sharpie. Sometimes highlighters look a little bit too fluorescent. You can, I don't know if you guys knew this, but you can, I'm going to leave a little of the white. You can also kind of blend Sharpies if you work pretty quickly. I'm going to put, using the side of my marker, I'm going to put, and towards the top of my sky, I want it to look lighter, so I'm not going to color it in solid. I'm going to leave a little of the white showing through. I'm going to blend in some oranges. Ooh, this one's almost dried out, which actually is kind of working to my advantage. And you want to just kind of um, just lay in. Remember, this isn't super realistic. This is kind of an abstract landscape. I'm just going to go over now orange. You can color more solid if you want. I'm doing kind of horizontal lines. I'm going to go a little 
deeper orange. As I move towards my horizon line, I see some purples. I guess that would mean this is a sunset, not a sunrise, right? The sky is darker towards the horizon line. So I'm just gonna lay down some of my purples next. Kind of blending into my orange and yellows with my deeper. Throw a little pink in there. I'm layering colors. I'm just doing simple, straightforward strokes. I'm going to do a little purple and blue next. Yeah, this would definitely be a sunset, I think. And you can, you kind of get the idea. You could pause and kind of get caught up now. Maybe just do a sky, your background. Um, or you can stay with me as I finish this up. And then I'm going to do some purple. Ooh, I really like the way this is looking. There's no wrong or right here. That's the beauty of art. Art is what it is. And your own. I have a lot of good purple markers. I might need to go to the store. I think I do need to go to the store to finish this. Oh boy. I'm going to try switching over. I know I have some purple Crayola. I'm just going to mix. Oh yeah, that works good. Mixing even different kinds of markers. Now I'm using a little Crayola with my Sharpie. One thing about Sharpie markers is you might want to make sure you have a fan or a window open because Sharpie markers kind of smell very strong and it's not something you want to breathe in for a long period of time. If you can smell it, it's getting inside your head, so you might want to open up a window and get some fresh air. <clears throat> All right, I've got my beautiful background. I'm going to fill in some of that white. And I'm going to now bring down some of those colors into my water. I'm going to stop here and just kind of um, finish coloring in because this would be a good point in time for you to just really um, work on the coloring stages. If you're using markers, kind of follow along with I, what I did. If you're using crayons, you could be layering and blending the crayons together. If you're using chalk pastels, same thing. Oil pastels, same thing. Um, at this point in time, I'm going to stop and I'll come back to you when I'm almost finished. And then I'll show you the last step to make it look like it's stained glass. Okay. Have fun and um, be creative. Okay. I am back with the finished version, marker version, of my kind of abstracted landscape. Um, this was my original. And this is my marker rendition of it. Lots of layering, lots of blending, um, with a background, a middle ground, and a foreground. So this is kind of abstract. It's not grounded in being super realistic. It doesn't look exactly like the photo. It's different. That's okay because I already have a photo and I really like it. I also did this um, while we were apart um, virtually. I did this in crayon also and with the crayon instead of outlining it with black sharpie, my sun, my horizon line, and my foreground line where my waves are breaking. I didn't outline it. I left it really soft and kind of let it be more of a muted, beautiful, kind of blendy sunrise. I think it's a sunrise or sunset. I wish my friend Carter was here in my eighth grade class because we always joke that Carter is a human computer and he would know right away and tell us if this was a sunrise or sunset. I'm gonna guess sunset, but miss you, Carter. Anyway, um, so that's the version of it um, in crayon. And again, I said you could do colored pencil, you could do um, oil pastels, you could even turn this into a beautiful painting if you have paints at home. Now I'm gonna show you one last trick before I say goodbye until our next art lesson. And if you want to make this a beautiful kind of like stained glass picture that if you hang in your window, um, the light will kind of flow through it and it'll look really cool, simple step. Flip it over. 
borrow that vegetable oil or baby oil that we talked about. Put a little bit. You don't want to get a gob of it. You want to get a nice amount on a rag or a cotton ball or a paper towel. And then you want to do all along the back of your paper. Um, I'm going to add a little more oil. Oops, of course I got too much on there. You're going to put a layer. Ooh, I really got too much on there. It's going to show some drips, I think. You want to put a layer of that oil. And if you do too much, just pull some up like I did. Um, with the dry part of the paper towel. Now you're going to kind of let that dry a little bit before you hang it up, but when you hang it up, um, you might want to get someone to help you do that, but when you hang it up and hold it up against the light, it's going to look really pretty and um, kind of like stained glass with the light from outside shining through it. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. A couple of quick reminders. Um, we talked about um, the, the good rules for a composition. That first rule was um, rule of two-thirds. If you have your horizon line, make sure it's not dead center. If you have um, something like I had my sun, make sure it's off a little bit. Um, we talked about middle ground. My middle ground was my ocean and the waves breaking. And we talked about things in the background are small, things in the middle ground are a little bit larger, and then things in the foreground. For example, if I had, um, I didn't in my picture, but if I had, let's say, a palm tree coming out, um, that would look much bigger than anything else in my picture because it would be in the foreground. And you'll notice I'm putting that palm tree off to the side a little bit. I'm not putting it dead center because anytime you put anything dead center it often makes your picture look stagnant. The other thing we talked about was overlapping colors, blending colors. This wasn't a lesson about color theory, it's more about just introducing you to landscapes. Um, but the most important thing is have fun and be creative. Find your own reference picture if you can. If not, pick one off of the internet. And just remember, uh, art is a really great way to get us through these interesting times. And I will be back again soon. Bye!